Hi everyone, my name is Anthony James Hayes. You probably know me from Best from Brothers to Searching, and I'm so honored today that you meet me here. I want to talk about a little bit about my book. The first one I wrote was Journey of the Christians from Dead Works to Living Faith, my very first book. It's about the story about me pretty much going through things and how I overcome by the Word of God. And here is The New Kingdom with Liberty Man and Evil Stone. That's my second best book so far. And I want to take a little time to tell you about my second book mostly. The first one is about some children. They go to like an adventure. They go to see a new kingdom. The future, I guess you can say, of God and how he's going to restore the kingdom to Garden of Eden conditions. And they fight good and evil and light and darkness. So I encourage you to actually get these books. They're available on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. And then my second story, Liberty Man, a man who fights for freedom. And he takes off the chains of tyranny, of the kings of tyranny, off of him. So he finally gets free, and I hope you find out his journey and how he got free and so on. And then my third book, The Evil Stone, a man who actually turned to the devil, or he sold his soul to the devil for a powerful magic stone. And he had the promise of ruling the world. So I hope you enjoy these books. They're available. And they're family friendly and they're something you can learn with the Word of God. They're parables that you can teach your children and your grandchildren about. So I encourage you today to go to these places and I hope you bless and you enjoy these books. Thank you. Cheers and good on you. Why aren't you listening to Brothers Just Searching? Why? You're about to embark on a journey through the written word of God on subjects that deal with the day. This is Brothers Just Searching. Well, how you doing, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Brothers Just Searching, where we talk about God's Word and current world events to educate and to edify the believers of Jesus Christ. I'm Isaac Hayes, as always, with Brother Bowen and Brother Anthony Hayes. Guys, what is going on? Life. Life, life. <laughs> well, we're trying out some new stuff tonight, so hey. You oh, know. wow. Hey. Let's see, let's see how hey. it goes. Bowen, yeah. people in the near future might see your face. Well, well, it's a scary <laughs> world. Um, it, it, it's a real scary world, so uh, don't don't be shocked if they start running. <laughs> we try to grow the audience, but it might not be helping. <laughs> That's not going to help. <laughs> nah, everybody, keep us in prayer because we are trying out some new equipment tonight. We are trying to get into YouTube, into Facebook, and all that stuff. Uh, we've been getting requests asking us to go ahead and get into that. So if you can go ahead and keep us in your prayers and pray that the Lord bless us. You know, a lot of people think that people that do this, they have a lot of money and they have a lot of things they can do. You know, we have people that donate to us every so often mm -hmm. and we use that money to go ahead and fund these projects. Um, but, you know, the Lord's providing for us and this podcast is growing. I just want to thank everyone out there for for helping out with your prayers. And, you know, even some financially this helps out. We just want to thank y'all for what y'all doing because without y'all, it, it wouldn't be impossible. You know, if we just came in here and talked, it wouldn't be uh it wouldn't be that much fun. Right, that's true. We gotta have somebody listen to us. Yeah, and, and Bowen look, Bowen came on this program from listening to us, so you, you, you know the world's getting a real desperate place when they got to listen to us, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting bad. Yeah, it's getting real bad when you got to listen to us. You're right. They're really desperate. <laughs> well, I hate to say it. Some of the people that are out there that are preaching and teaching, which we're going to talk a little bit about tonight. Right. Um, if we have to rely on them, we're in trouble. So I'd rather them listen to us, which get sound doctrine and mm -hmm. truth in them mm -hmm. instead of listening to... People. Uh, he, people that are called heathens. That's yeah, right. real, real quick, real quick. Yeah, it is, <laughs> they're, they're preaching heresy, to be honest. Yeah, you, Thank you. you. You know, they can listen to people like us who got it all together, you know. Uh, Boogie, speak <laughs> for yourself. Don't speak, uh, you know, you're speaking for yourself. I like how he, he thought that as an insult, like, hey, don't, don't, don't put me in there. <laughs> don't put me in there at all, Boogie. I don't have it all together yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> all right. Well, look, while, I'm at, while we had this moment talking about our audience and everything, I want to go ahead and say if you have not yet please hit that subscribe button and uh, follow button wherever platform you're on I know different platforms do different things uh, also go ahead and go on our Facebook page brothers just searching 
Uh, you can get everything on there as well. We share all the new episodes. We're trying to do some stuff on Thursday nights as well. That's in the works. And also, if you can, go check out our website, www.brotherjustsearching.wordpress.com. We put all our new episodes up there, and there's some ways we can go ahead and dive into that. We're, we're working on the video side, but we're trying to do more on the Internet side as well. So just go ahead and check those out, guys, and um, support us in any way, shape, or form. We, we appreciate everything y'all do. So, all right, so this week was kind of um, ups and downs and all, right, all the way around. And we had a lot of things going on, and we we were supposed to have, I think I think Brother Brandon or something like that. It it got mixed up. We didn't know what was going on. So, Boogie, you came up to me and said uh, we need a topic, and I was it was my turn. I'm like, man, what I'm going to talk about, you mm-hmm. know? And it's you just get some time that way. You just go ahead and you get it to where you don't know what to talk about. Uh, what subject you got to go on? So I started looking into my topics of things I was studying. And I caught this video early in the week, and I, the Lord brought it back to me, I could say. Because I think it's a subject that we need to talk about. And we got to talk about men proclaiming themselves to be gods. Now, if you if you go ahead and look... In this world, Hitler did it. Um, a lot of the pharaohs did it. And th- these are real heathen men. They don't go ahead and, and they, they, they proclaim themselves to be God. So you're like, hmm. So that that's a worldly view. But what about preachers today proclaiming themselves to be gods? Hmm. Now, you might be telling me, you might be scratching your head, folks, and saying, wait a minute. Hold on. Preachers? Oh, no. There is no such thing as a preacher saying that he is God. Well, I've got a, I got a video, and it really disturbed me, and we're going to dive into that. We are going <clears> to <throat> dive into the thought process of the Word of Faith movement proclaiming themselves to be God. We did a whole uh, podcast of that, but this really disturbed me right here. And we're going to go ahead and play Stephen Furtick's um, audio right now. Y'all just take a listen, everyone. And there's nobody that can leave my life that can keep God from keeping his covenant with me. I'm not in covenant with a person. I'm not in covenant with a political party. I'm in covenant with God Almighty. I am God Almighty. Get that off you. That's not your name. That's not your station. That's not your end. It's in me. It's in me. It's in me. It is God that worketh in you. All right, folks. So you just heard Stephen Furtick clearly say that he is God Almighty. You might be saying that because there's a lot of people that go that discuss this and say, oh, wait, Isaac, wait, you're taking that out of content. He maybe misspoke and stuff like that, but not necessarily. If you study the, the core teaching of the Word of Faith movement, they believe that when God created you know, Adam and Eve, that we were in a godlike figure. We were, we were created as, so, you know, God made us perfect. God made us in his image. He said, let's make man in our image, and we're going to go ahead, and we were made in the image of God, which made us little gods. If you're saying that's not true, listen to Cleflo Dollar. Lord, I believe that is the one on the far right. Listen to Cleflo Dollar and his description of what they believe. Go. Now, in verse 26 and verse 27, God now submits himself to this principle of everything producing after its own kind. And in verse 26 and 27, let's read it out loud. Ready? Read. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now that's interesting because if everything produces after its own kind, we now see God producing man. And if God now produces man and everything produces after its own kind, 
If horses get together, they produce what? And if dogs get together, they produce what? If cats get together, they produce what? But if the Godhead gets together and say, let us make man, then what are they producing? They're producing gods. Now, I got to hit this thing real hard in the very beginning because I ain't got time to go through all this. But I'm going to say to you right now, you are gods, little g. You are gods because you came from God and you are gods. You're not just human. The only human part about you is this physical body that you live in. So that's Clefo Dollar clearly stating that we are little gods according to their teachings. Why did they say that? Like I said, they say we was made in the image of God. So we are little gods. But due to the fall of man that we've fallen into a state, we've taken on the nature of <laughs> Satan. So we ain't no longer little gods until Christ came. Christ died on the cross. Now, I was doing some study on this. They say that Christ left his dignity. He wasn't God, apparently, when he came down to earth. But he left his dignity. He was as a human. Now, he did miracles and everything because it was showing that even a man in a fallen state could still do miracles and a man of fallen state could still go ahead and as long as he believed enough. It's the power of faith. And what they say is they say what happens is that when Christ died on the cross, Christ went to hell. He didn't go to paradise. I heard Brother uh, Lee, uh, Lee Ship from First New Testament do an awesome teaching on where did Christ go when he died and he disproves all that about him going to hell. But they believe he went to hell. While in hell took on the nature, the, nation, uh, the, the nature of Satan, had to be born again. When he rose again, he, he, he came up to this God-like figure, which mm -hmm. made him God. And they go, and when he was raised from the dead, now, because he's raised from the dead, he, had the, he was God-like, so he had faith. He believed in his faith. That's what made him walk through walls and everything. And that's why they say when Jesus went up, uh, when Jesus ascended, that's why J Jesus sent the Holy Spirit so we can have that same like faith experience. If you're born again in their belief that you can go ahead and you can create things. You can go ahead and walk through walls if you believe enough. That's where this name and the claim it comes in. And they also believe that if you um, if you're sick. If you you're you're in poverty, you're you know you're not you're not living out your faith, and you need to start trusting the faith. So basically, and I like how this brother said it on God Questions. He said they are making an idol out of faith. They're putting more faith in uh, their faith than in God. Now I got one more clip I want to play for y'all because y'all say, "Well, Isaac, this got to be a new thing." No, it's not. This is Paul Crouch and. Kenneth Copeland talking and at the end also Kenneth Copeland preaching and proclaiming that he is God as well. Go. He doesn't even draw a distinction no. between himself no. and... Never, never. You never can do that in a covenant relationship. Do you know what else that's settled then tonight? This hue and cry and controversy that has been spawned by the devil to try and bring dissension within the body of Christ yeah. that we're gods. I am a little God. <laughs> yes. Yes. I have the his reason. name. I'm one with him. I'm in covenant relation. Yeah. I am a little God. Critics, you are anything that he is. When I read in the Bible where he says, I am, I just smile and say, yes, I am too. Now, if you go ahead, and I know I'm talking a lot, guys. We're going to no, get y'all no, opinions. Go ahead. Kenneth Copeland was trained up by uh, Kenneth Hagin. Kenneth Hagin was, you could say, the grandson of this movement. It really started with... E.W. Kenya, who studied mysticism, new thought teachings of Phoenix, Quabri, uh, whatever they call that, and mind science. That's where the name of claimant came in. E.W. Uh, e. Kenya, um, uh, I just mentioned Kenneth Hagen mm -hmm. read his stuff. Kenneth Hagen was, uh, Kenneth Copeland was influenced by Kenneth Hagen. And that, now we're starting to see a trickle effect because Stephen Furtick says his mentor is T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes was also influenced by Kenneth Hagin. And these two men have their predecessors, you could say, in Todd White with Kenneth Copeland and T.D. Jakes with Stephen Furtick. Now, you might be saying, Isaac, why, why is this all important? Well, we've been teaching for the last couple of weeks. We mentioned it last week with Brother Nelson was on the program. And the week before, we talked about sound doctrine. Mm 
But when you brought up sound doctrine in your teaching last time, folks, we are not here to condemn these men. I hope these men are saved. The way they're talking, I don't, I'm not so sure. But we're not here to condemn these men. We're not here to go ahead and try to bash their ministries because we think our ministry is better. We're here to expose, one of our duties here is, is to expose false doctrine. And this is heresy. To think that we are little gods because we were made in the image of God. Guys, I'm, I don't, that's why Stephen Furtick said that. A lot of people, well, he misspoke. No, he didn't misspoke. You know what's sad is I looked at this video and I think 600,000 people have watched this video and liked it. Mm. There were, there, there's pe- multiple people that commented on this video and said, oh, this was, um, this, this was for me today. This encouraged me. This blessed me. And all along they're getting fed slop. A spiritual slop that is giving them, they're making them spiritually lazy, giving them spiritual junk food, whatever you want to label it. To call yourself a God in content or out of content, no preacher in his right mind should say that the sovereign of the whole universe made you a little God, which is with a little G, as Cleflo Dollar said. So I think the the proof is in the pudding with the, the three short clips that we played tonight. This is heresy. And look, I'm sorry. I'm not a little God. I'm sorry. I I was saved by the God. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. That word means he is. He is there. That's him. He has saved us. And he has brought us through. We are the call. That's like Frankenstein calling himself, you know, his creator. Um, You know, whoever made Dr. Frankenstein. It's sad. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the panel because I really want to get your opinion because I know, Boogie, you was like, oh, that that's normal. But, Bowen, yesterday, when I showed you that video at church, you flipped. <laughs> you flipped. You look you know, like you were doing with the, with the Paul Cross video just now. You was just like, oh, my goodness. I just let, – let's go ahead and get your opinions on this because I, I think this is a very serious issue. Well, the thing that I noticed, like, I heard about the Word of Faith before, but studying deep like I have now since the last time we did the other one and this one, I mean, it's, I hate to say it, it's occultic. I mean, it's almost like Mormonism and it's almost like these other groups. And uh, it's just amazing how, like, you know, how can men think they're they're gods, you know? I mean, and that that's going to be perfect for the Antichrist. People don't realize... I think there's a spirit of the Antichrist and Satan that's pushing this to get the church and worldly people. And it's getting, you know, the new age. People don't realize if you study new age material and you study a uh, word of faith, they're almost identical. The only difference is uh, one puts a Christian label on top of it. That's it. But Satan is using the new age movement and he's using the word of faith to get worldly and Christian people to get ready for the Antichrist. It is all pushing for the Antichrist because the Bible says... The, sin of, the, the man of sin will be revealed, him sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And I think one of the reasons, the, and another thing I think the Antichrist is going to do, he, to make people follow him, he said, I'm not only God, I'm just showing you the God likeness that you can become as well. I'm your example, if I'm a God, and I'm an example, and you can be God like me. So I think this is all going to work out for the Antichrist one way, and to get people to follow him. So... This has all been pl- seed planted for years, I believe, by Satan. And what makes people so, um, what made the word of faith so deceiving and made people thinking it was Christian is because they mix a little bit of Pentecostalism, a little Protestantism with it, a little bit of truth, and they mix it up with Scientology and, and New Age teaching, and they, all they did was mix it up together. But uh, don't get me wrong, your words do have power, but... And the Bible does speak that death and life is in the tongue. So your, you know, your speech, your, your, your doubt can bring destruction or curse in your life. But it's not where you're creating things like God or it's not like. Well, they, where, say, that's, yeah. they say that's that faith force, you know, that, right. that faith force that has you mm-hmm. where you could speak things into existence. That's why they, they use that verse a lot. The power of the tongue. But it, 
that's not what that scripture is talking about. Like mm-hmm. you said, mm-hmm. it's not talking about putting, you know, making you sick or, you know, you speaking bad things upon you. You know, a lot of times people speak bad things upon they they, they, they speak on their actions. But just to say, oh, I'm going to have a bad day today. All of a sudden you had a bad day. It's not that's not how that works. It's our faith should not be placed in our faith. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because Paul says it's here. Uh, formerly, you do know. Formerly, when you did not know God, you were enslaved to those that by natures are not gods. That's basically what he's saying. You're not God. Just not, you know, you're not enslaved to each other. But now that you know, you have come to know God, or rather, be known uh, by God. How can you turn back again to weak and wordless elements, principles of this world, who slaves you? You you want to be once more. So it's saying you can't go back into the world and all that stuff. But this is saying that. Men ain't God, so we can't speak things into existence. You go, we can make things that God has already made, like uh, you know, we could take dust and make a pot, but right, we can't right. say, man, I need dirt. Bring me dirt. Make dirt and make dirt with your finger. It's, it's well, impossible. Well, this is what people got to realize, and we want to get back to what you said. Now, we're not gods, but we do have some characteristics that Correct. God has. God is love. We should be love. Uh, like big, the biggest one of the biggest things when God. I mean, we the only difference is when God creates things. He creates nothing. He creates something out of nothing. But us, we create, like you said, we create things that's already there. But we create planes. We build homes. Man is very creative. You know, like these pyramids, they still don't know, even if it was built in a false way, they still don't know how these pyramids were built. So what I'm saying is we do, because we came from God, we will have some DNA or we have, we have some characteristics but we're not God, little gods, or we're not a clone of him, of God. So that's a big, that's a whole different ballgame, you know. Go ahead, Bo, and I know you got a lot to say. Yeah, go ahead. I just, um, I want the listeners to understand something. Um, Isaac said it, but I want to say it again. We're not here to bash uh, ministers or, or, or people or put them down or anything. But I'm going to share something with y'all, those of y'all that are listening or that's going to listen to this. First thing you got to realize, man was created in the image of God. And when man, when man was created, Adam was created. Adam had no sin in him. He was perfect. He was about the most perfect human being that was created. He was the first human being. He was perfect. He had no sin God gave him dominion over the Garden of Eden. God gave him dominion over everything. Then God found out that it's not good for man to be alone, so he gave him a helpmate, which was Eve. Now, I don't know where these preachers take that, that we're we're little gods. So the only way I can see this is that they're taking this out of the book of Genesis where Adam was perfect. Okay, but what you have to understand is Adam wasn't perfect all the time because Adam was given the commandment. The day that you eat of the tree of the good and knowledge of good and evil, you shall die. God was talking to Adam. You shall die spiritually. In other words, Adam would be totally separated from God spiritually, him and Eve. Before that happened, Adam wasn't separated from God. Him and God walked in the garden together in the cool of the evening. God came and visited with Adam in the cool of the evening. God made himself present with Adam. But when Eve and Adam bit of that fruit or whatever it was, and their eyes were open to the good and the evil, they knew what sin was, they knew what it was. They, they, God knew, right? And God knew this was going to happen before, before it ever happened. God had it all planned. God had a plan B. He went with plan A. He had a plan B. Now, man fell in the Garden of Eden. God chased them out, mm-hmm. put a sword that they couldn't go back. Now, how can we ourselves especially me a fallen creature that comes out of the trash pile or out of the the sewage um how can i call myself a little god i'm full of sin okay and and the only way that my sins can be forgiven or taken away from me is by jesus who came down from his throne from his his home where he was there for all eternity, came down in the form of a man, came down and walked this earth among 
men that was created by God, that God put here and gave dominion to, and, and were sinners, and went to a cross and died that they could be forgiven for their sins. How can we be little gods if we're corrupted and full of sin? Well, that's how, what... how, can, how can we call ourselves little gods? How can I measure up? to a God of the universe that spoke everything to existence. How can I measure up to a God that took dust and formed man and bred life into his body and gave him a living soul and a spirit? Mm -hmm. How can I call myself a God when I speak and nothing is created out of nothing? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. I'm not a God. I'm a human being. I was creating God's image. Yes, I do have some characteristics of what God. I do have a an anger spirit. I do get angry. Uh, I, I do I do love people. I, you know, there's things that are in me that show that God created me. Exactly. But I'm not a little God. Well, no, but but no. when, that's the thing that like this whole teaching and uh, while well, you're bringing up to the intro. Because we fall and we lost our God likeness. We did. So, okay, I got a question. If you are, hey, you know, I'm just thinking about something. It sounds like it sounds like a movie or a story. Do you remember the Thor movie, Boogie? Remember when mm-hmm. Odom threw him down and he lost all his powers mm-hmm. and everything? Mm-hmm. That's basically what they told us that that God did with us. Oh, you fell and you disobeyed me, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw you down and not give you nothing. But then he sent Jesus down, and that's what the the whole doctrine of Jesus going to hell. Yes. And having to be born again is heresy enough. Mm-hmm. Wow. But to call us that if we believe in Jesus Christ, we come back this God. I, I, can't, I can't remember. I, I think it's Kenneth Copeland. I'm not sure. But Kenneth Copeland said one time. I think it's Kenneth Copeland. Don't quote me. But there was a minister that said one time, you know, you know why them rich people have money like that? Because they're expressing faith in God more than the Christians. Because they, they, even if people, if they pray, they still are expressing that faith. Well, first of all, the Bible's clear that if you're not saved and you pray to the dear, to the Lord in heaven, he's not going to hear you. No. That is scripture. But to come on and say that that because Jesus died and Jesus came back because he was a born again, he showed us what a true Christian was, and the Holy Spirit comes so we can have this faith force like Christ had. There's so much heresy in yeah. that teaching. And like you said, but how can a man like us, a fallen state, Go ahead and say, we're little gods. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. As a believer, I can't even comprehend much. The, the Lord that saved me, the Lord that gave me life and gave it to me, I can't even comprehend. I, I wouldn't even dare going up to my youth group and saying, hey, guys, guess what? I'm God Almighty. Oh, no. I, I can't imagine doing that. But I know what it is they're saying because because you have the faith of God and you're made as a little God. I didn't get why he was saying that. It's in me. It's in me. Because God working through you had to catch himself. But when he was saying it's in me because he's saying I'm a little God. That's that's basically what he was saying. But let me read let me read something out of the book of Philippians. And, and I want to read something. And, and I was reading it. And it's in chapter 2 and verse 7 and 8. I want to read this, and I want you to listen to what it says, mm-hmm. because it's going to say a lot about what we're trying to bring out today uh, in, in, in this teaching that we're talking about. And to me, uh, the word of faith is not even biblical. No, it's it, not. It, no. It's not. There, there's, no, there's nothing to back up the word of faith. There's nothing to back up back it up biblically. There is some, there's, there's there is some truth in yes, there, but it's, not, it's it, not. Right. But let me read something. But made himself of no reputation and took up on him the form of a, of a servant and was made into the likeness of men and being formed in the fashion of a man he humbled himself and because obedient unto death even the debt of the cross now now some of these preachers boogie some mm-hmm. of these preachers you know you read that and and I don't know who said it, but one of them said, "Well, any man could have died on the cross. Oh, yeah. Any yeah, sinner, break. any yeah, sinner could could have went to the cross and died." And I think that's where that came from, Boogie. Mm-hmm. That's where they took mm-hmm. that from. You know, Jesus came down to earth as a man in the form of a man, took on the form of a man. But what did I understand? Jesus wasn't born the way we were born. No, nope. you see, no. Jesus was born. Jesus was incarnated. Mm-hmm. Jesus was born by the Holy Ghost. Jesus was born by the Spirit of God. He was in coronated into marriage. He wasn't born like we were born. No. He wasn't done like we were done. No. 
He was so a, yeah. he, that's right. He didn't have nothing in him. He was perfect. Here. And that's where they get this from saying, well, any, any, any man could have, any born again believer could have went to the cross. Let me tell you something. That is nothing but heresy. That is blasphemy. And, and I tell you what, any preacher that can sit down and say that needs to leave the things of God alone and leave the things of God alone and turn away from it and walk away from it because you lying through your freaking teeth. Yeah, you're Amen. right. That's you're right. right. And that's, that's the right. thing. Look, I like how the author Amen. said on, um, and I don't know the guy, brother's name, but he said, in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily, Colossians 2.9, 2, 9, for in him was the whole fullness of dignity dwelt bodily. They're talking about Christ was God bodily. He was God bodily. But because, by becoming man, Jesus gave up the glory of heaven, but not his divine, Di- divine din- dignity. Din- his dignity. And it goes to that same scripture where it brings out six, instead it brings out six and seven where it says, "Who, though he was in the form, form. of God, did not count equally with God a thing to be get a grasp, but emptied himself by taking in the form of a servant, servant. being born in the likeness of man. man." That scripture does not say that he was. He left his dinner. He took on the form of man. He was truly God. Mm-hmm. And then that's when it goes to verse 8. And being found in a human form, he humbled himself and by, by becoming obedient to the point of death, death. even the death, death on the a cross. cross. So that's what he was saying. He was being, he took on a bodily form to go ahead and to pay the price of sin and not even have sin on him. See, that's what a lot of people say. Oh, he had sin on him on that cross. No. He took, he took the off. set, that's the right. debt that's right. penalty. That's right. He didn't become that's right. sin. That's right. That, he, he, Jesus he, had no he, sin on him. He, he took he, he took the debt penalty because mm-hmm. we were under the law. Okay? That's right. that's the right. law. If we would have kept living the way we were living, we were living under the law. The law can't save you. No. The no. law can't save you, but the law can lead you to repentance. That's right. The law can lead you to the cross. The law can lead you to the blood of Jesus. And when a person realizes that and comes to that point and says, man, I need a savior. I, I need to get saved. I need to, I, I need to get my sins taken away. Hey, the Ten Commandments are good, but nobody can hold the Ten Commandments. Nobody can follow them. But you know what? When Jesus died on that cross, yep. he was perfect. Amen. The Ten Commandments were perfect. He didn't break one law. He didn't break one commandment. He was perfect. So you know what? When we get born again and the Spirit of God lives in us, you know what? It's not because we do it. It's the Jesus that lives in us that helps yep. us to keep the Ten Commandments. Exactly. Bo is preaching up in here this morning tonight. Woo! <laughs> hey, listen, yeah. look, these preachers that are preaching this, this, this word of faith thing, it, it, it makes me mad because I do not like people to take the word of God and, and take the son of God and do what they're doing to him. You know, yeah. I, I've heard it said that Jesus died, went to hell, and the demons and the devils, they were dancing mm-hmm. on him and jumping on him and laughing at him. <laughs> You know what? That's blasphemy, bro. And, and you know what? Up. If you don't repent gonna, of them sins, you're going to burn in hell. I'm going to say this about that theory of them dancing on it. If they went ahead and feared him before he went to the cross, mm-hmm. how much more? I don't think the devil I don't think the devil and his demons were trying to, they weren't trying to push him to the cross. They were trying to stop him. Stop him. That's right. Because you see mm-hmm. these movies like, um, I know it's a Catholic movie, Boogie, yeah. but the Passion I think did the best part of it. Mm-hmm. The devil was trying to kill him before he before got to he the got cross. To the yes, cross. Yes, and, yeah. and 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 they show that. And that, like I said, for it was, it was a Catholic film. They had some incorrect stuff in there. But you remember that part when 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 Christ said, "It is finished." Finish. They show the devil like yelling in the in the center of the yeah. earth, yelling, "No!" Because right. he knew, knew it was finished. finished. Mm-hmm. And look, you That's know what right. sad is? These word of faith people, if they would have made that movie, would have had him in hell oh, and the yeah. devil dancing over him. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Well, well the point I want to make this because we're going to talk about a lot about false religions and stuff here in cults. One of the ways you can tell a cult it's by when they say the cross is not enough. Pretty much when they say, yeah, the cross was okay, but there's other avenues. Like, for example, I think it's the Seventh-day Adventists. They believe that, yeah, Christ died on the cross, but his real, the, the, the full payment or the complete payment was in the tabernacle in heaven. Or, uh, or in, like uh, in the Catholic Church, it's like, yeah, we know Christ died for our sins, but you got to go to purgatory 
and burn all of the rest well, of your what sins. About, what about uh, and, and, some Protestant movements? You know, some Pentecostals, yes, Jesus died for our sins, but you have to be baptized, uh-huh, uh-huh. and then you have, to be, you have to come up out of the water speaking in tongues. If it, that's the case, you are not saved. They are adding to salvation. Mm-hmm. And that's how because, you can tell. And, they, oh, mm-hmm. and look, they're using scriptures. Like I said, the Word of Faith preachers, Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagen, um, Jesse Duplantis, Joe Osteen, Stephen Furtick, and I can mention all of them, Todd White. They all teach something that's adding on to the gospel. And And what does Jesus say? Don't add to this word and don't take to this word. The thing of it, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm about to say too. There are some things that Stephen Furtick says is biblical. Mm -hmm. Right. Todd White says some things that is biblical. You know, and that's, I, I don't know if this is how their mind works. Don't get me wrong. Like Todd White, remember a while back we had Brother David here and we was talking about Todd's white uh, so-called repentance because Repent. he hadn't been preaching the whole gospel. <clears throat> the next week, he totally flipped that. He brought it back to a word of faith. And I'm like, word of faith you're not, you're not, that ain't true repentance. Repentance means turn away. Right. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Right. I understand why Justin Peters and other uh, Calvinist teachers said that. Well, if he truly repent, he needs to give his church to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Right, but he and look, Todd White's still preaching the same garbage that he's preaching about Christ going to hell, and and look, and look, I know this. I know we're preaching to a Christian audience, and I know there's going to be some people that are going to say, "How dare you attack Stephen Furtick? How dare you attack Todd White? Everything well, they're saying is biblical." Yeah. And look, I think the only thing they could say <laughs> to add up to these scriptures is to say God made us in our own image. God made him in His uh, made us in His own image. And that, that's, I'm going to tell you what: these people that are listening to us, if they get offended by what we're saying, mm-hmm. if they're offended by what we're saying mm-hmm. tonight, mm-hmm. which is the truth. They need to go back and read the Bible. Read the yes. Bible. Okay? You need to go back and study the scriptures. Because let me tell you something. I've studied the Bible many, many times, and, and, and I've read through the Bible more than one time. So I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not ignorant of the Word of God. I don't know everything, but I know enough to know when I hear false doctrine. Mm-hmm. I know enough to know when I hear people blaspheming the Son of God and blaspheming the Holy Ghost and blaspheming the Father. I know enough. Listen, I listen. I backslidden probably two or three times, but you know what? I never had the guts. I never had the nerve to to come and, and say something against the Word of God or say something that wasn't in the Bible, or or, or talk against the Son of God. You know mm-hmm. why? Because I got too much of a fear of God in my heart to mm-hmm. do that, bro. Listen, I don't want to burn in hell for some stupidity that I do. Exactly. That's right. Hey, look, hey, ju- just imagine these men. If they if they make heaven, I, I'm not I'm not trying to judge their salvation, but making statements like that, believing you're God Almighty, mm-hmm. it, it scares me. Let's just say it like that. But they say when they when they meet Christ or they meet God face to face, and they have this played back because mm. the Bible Ooh. says every word Ooh. that you have spoken is going to be it's gonna brought be play, back. It's going to be, be brought played back. back to you. Now, but hold on, that's a as ministers of the gospel, and we have this on us. I'm not saying because we're a little lonely podcast that we don't have this. Uh, we don't have this burden on us. Oh, we're ministers oh, of the gospel. What we say over this microphone, what I go ahead and I minister buddy. at you service, Boogie, what you write in a book, Bowen, what you preach over a pulpit, you, you have are, to give an account mm-hmm. for every word you say. So imagine you are responsible for what you say, buddy. A man, mm-hmm. I, and look, I'm, I'm, I don't hope that, Lord, Lord, I, I pray for Stephen Furtick. I pray for all the ministers. But to come out and say, I have God Almighty and I am God Almighty. Mm-mm. Look, I, I showed this to a brother in Christ Sunday. <clears throat> and he looked at me and said, Isaac, it didn't make sense what he was saying to begin with. Because mm. there is some people, oh, you didn't, all you heard was that clip. <laughs> uh, I got somebody that is, that is close to studying God's word. And he even said, I went and listened to the whole thing to make sure it wasn't out of content. But, and he said, he said, he, he meant to say what he said. Mm-hmm. Because look, Stephen Furtick, in that whole, whole episode of that whole sermon, was twisting scriptures. He was supposed to be talking about Jacob and how God changed from Jacob to, how he said that Jacob mm-hmm. means diverse. It was mean divide, and it does. Yeah. But he also said, well, Israel is, uh, the, the name Israel is more scary because that means you got to struggle with God. And he was saying, because you're struggling with God because it's inside of you. You're struggling with yourself. No, I'm not. Listen, 
God, God had to humble Jacob. Jacob. Mm-hmm. And that that was he changed his name to Israel because of that statement. Because, of that because statement. God said, "Look, you wrestle with God, and you got your blessing." Right. Mm-hmm. And look, but you, I remember one time you preached a message about struggling with God, mm-hmm. and you th- you saying that look, sometimes we have to struggle. The Lord has to break out our hip. The Lord, mm-hmm. but it's not that. Oh, because my finances is now I'm struggling with God because I'm I'm no, fighting no. my faith. No. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we, we're doubting and we're struggling with our faith, but at the same time, God, God, God brings us through. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times we remember. Yeah, exactly. you know what yeah, I'm saying. Exactly. And that's why yeah. that that whole name, that whole concept of oh, we're struggling inside. That oh, that's not biblical. No, no. Now I do believe that sometimes, like for example, uh, I was reading uh, Brother Swagger's footnote the other day. He was talking about Jain in the Book of Joshua. But I was looking for something in the Book of Joshua. I was looking for some stuff, and on his footnote. He was saying how Jericho stopped Israel or Satan was trying to use Jericho, Jericho. to keep Israel, Israel from the promised land or entering the promised land. Right. It was a hindrance to him. And he said, spiritually speaking, that could happen to us. So there's times where you can not spiritualize everything, but sometimes you can break back to a Christian life or understand. But I don't think he was doing that in that case. The way it sounded like he was trying to push the word of faith doctrine with that. That's what it sounds like to me, it, you know. <laughs> So I know sometimes you can use uh, we call parables or, or, or symbolism in our and, life. And I hate, but to, I hate to say it, and I, this is a whole different point on this. Mm. He's 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 preaching what he's been taught. Oh, is that exactly? Yeah. He because says I remember little, yeah. I remember when we did our Word of Faith teaching, where we went ahead and we broke down all their teaching. We didn't focus on the ministers per se, but we went ahead and we broke down just the teaching itself. Mm. And look, I, I said this. Stephen Furtick is being ta- is preaching what he ta- what he's been taught. Right. If T D. Jakes is his mentor, mm-hmm. then we have an issue because T D. Jakes has some issues. Has some issues with this. Same thing with Todd White. Todd White calls Kenneth Copeland his spiritual father. Mm. All, all the all these younger and, guys are. There is a replacement of them. Yeah, look, a younger. You know. You know. What's sad yeah. though. And look, I'm, I'm going to say about this. Why, like us, we were taught under good godly men. We mentioned a lot of them here. Brother Brandon, mm-hmm. my dad, Pastor Mike. Um, a lot of great godly men mm-hmm. that we were taught under. But we go ahead. But if we were taught that, none, we would have to. We would have to really open our hearts and our minds and say, Lord, show us the truth to mm-hmm. get out of that. Now, I don't know if these men went. It's, it's sad. These men are pastors, and they're full-time pastors. They can study all they want. Mm-hmm. They can easily study this and be, be say, look, oh, we're preaching wrong. Mm-hmm. But they're just going ahead and saying something that they went ahead and heard. That's well, what it sounds like. And what's the good news, if me and Brother Bowen's talking about this afternoon, if it's true, and I heard this from these two individuals, well, one individual from themselves, but I heard rumors, and I hope it's true, they say that Joyce Myers and Benny Hinn turned away from it. So I hope so. I mean, I don't know. That's what I heard. Benny I Hinn has is. done that three times. Oh, okay. I heard it's Joy Meyer. I don't know about Joy. I, I didn't hear know. about Joyce Meyer, but. They, they, they two were one of the uh, big ones into it, too, at one time. I think it's Spencer you know? Smith from uh, Brother Smith, uh, Minister Spencer Smith from uh, Kentucky that said that when, when Benny Hinn came out and said, the other day, oh, the prosperity message, I'm not going to ask for no more money. I'm not going to go ahead. You know, next week, you know, if you sow a seed of $1,000. Oh, he, he's back into it? Okay. Hey, yeah, I you, was hoping. You know but... what's sad? Benny Hinn's own nephew mm-hmm. turned away from the word of faith because he went ahead. Now, I'm glad he went that way instead of the other way, but Benny Hinn's nephew be- became a Calvinist. Oh, wow. So, you know, from one extreme to the next extreme, yeah, it's kind of. Yeah, yeah, And we got some brothers that are Calvinists. Don't, I'm not yeah, mocking yeah. them down. Yeah. But the the... <laughs> The problem with that is, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I didn't hear about that with Joyce Myers. Right, right. And if it did, great. But I hope yeah, so. Yeah. Going I, I, ahead. I, I, I uh, saw that on the video. Okay. Well, what would you have to say, Bo? You had something? Um, I wanted to read some scriptures, but I lost my train of thought of something that I wanted to say. But that's all right. Uh, I want to read something. And, and you know, this is going to go along with what we're talking about. Okay. Uh, now, the, 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 now, fate is the substance of things hoped for. And for the evidence of things not, not seen. seen, for by the elders obtained a good report. But verse 3 is the one I want you to look at and listen to. Uh, 
Through faith, we understand that the worlds were formed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Listen, okay, these these guys, <laughs> these guys claim to be little gods, mm -hmm. okay? Now, that scripture right there says, the worlds were made by the word of God. By the word of God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, mm -hmm. God created all. There was nothing there mm -hmm. when God created this. God spoke it. And it appeared. Mm. That's power, buddy. That that is power. Now I, I want to see these these clowns. Well, you see, no, according, well, according to them, they can do oh, that. They can according do that. Them, but I tell you that. what. I tell you what. You know, I, I I'd like to get their phone number and call them, <laughs> and, and I like to tell them, you know, come to my house, and, and I want you to speak something that I can't see into <laughs> existence. Then I sit there and mock them and laugh at them because you know what? They're not God. Okay, no. they are not God. They're sinners just like us. They're fallen creatures. They need a savior. They need to get saved. Now, now, Isaac, I, I pray for people. I pray for these men. God, forgive me if I'm saying something wrong. But listen, that 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 burns me up when I hear people like that, bro. That burns me up inside. That that just that just grieves my spirit because I serve a God that that gave me life. And I serve God that sent his son down here to die, to die for me. And that, that, I should have died on that cross. Not Jesus, man. Right. Come mm -hmm. on, bro. I should have been on that cross. Who do yeah. these guys think they are, bro? Well, well, people don't realize they're actually teaching a thing called uh, heroism. It's called. What it is is they believe that there's gods, but there is a God, higher God that you can worship. It's kind of like in Greek mythology where you had these gimme gods. You had Hercules. You had all these little it gods. kind of reminds me of the yeah, uh, India yeah. where they got yeah, these 300 yeah, yeah, gods. Yeah, yeah, but watch in Greek mythology, they have these little gods, but they have one Norse big mythology supreme. Too. Yeah, but they have the big supreme god. He's uh, he's Zeus. Oh, okay. So well, well, I, I think that's what they're well, doing. In, they're just saying Norse, we're in, little in Greek, gods, but there's a bigger, bigger god, god bigger than us, but right. we're little gods. In Greek yeah. mythology, mm -hmm. it's so Zeus. Same, yeah. In Norse mythology, it's, it's Odom. Odom. No, it's not Odom. Thor. It's Odom. Odom, Odom. Odom is yeah, the, right. the supreme ruler Deity. of everything. Mm -hmm. And you notice, and that's why... If you if you if you study this this stuff and you study theology and you study mm -hmm. if you watch the Marvel superhero shows mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the DC superhero shows, you see a lot of this stuff. I remember watching um, it was a uh, Wonder Woman the first movie, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was talking about and they in the movie they described Greek mythology to the T. Mm. And people were like, wow, what a great fairy tale. Well, yeah, it is a fairy tale, but. These these Greek uh, men and women mm -hmm. believed in this. A lot of Greek mythology is still believed today. It's in, and Norse mythology is believed in Hinduism. Mm -hmm. Like you said, that there's one superior god. Like Zeus, and I'm going to use Greek mythology. Zeus is the the main supreme one. He tops them all. Now, then you mm -hmm. had Diana, which was his daughter, mm -hmm. which is because all his sons or whatever died. They were all gods, but they all died by one person. And Diana was made a god in a woman's form so that he wouldn't know it. If you watch, I'm, I'm serious, if you watch the Wonder Woman wo wo movie, you're like, wow, mm -hmm. Greek mythology. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Like I said, if you watch the Thor movie, and you watch Marvel movies in general, right. They, right. Yeah. And what a the, lot of their inspiration yeah. was Norse mythology, but mm -hmm. this, this uh, being little gods and stuff. Yeah, it goes way they back. They took there. this from a heathen standpoint, a wicked standpoint. Mm hmm. And said, "Oh, if we say we're made in the image of God, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then we're little that gods. we're little gods." Yeah. So they took whole. They, it's the same thing they did with evolution. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that, like the gap theory and the day age theory that's in the Bible. They say, "Wow, this evolution sounds true." So we got to go ahead and make it to where it fits the Bible. Mm -hmm. It don't fit the Bible. It don't fit the Bible. But they don't fit the Bible. They try to make. Yeah. They try to put a square piece in a round, uh, a round uh, hole. A round hole. They, all they did was put a Christian label on it. That's all they did with some of these things. And what people don't realize, they are you teaching a thing called uh, it's is is a is a new age the that they believe that God is in you and God is in everything. It's called pantheism. It's called. 
And all they're doing is there's a little difference. It's, they don't believe that everything's God, but they do believe everyone is God if they enter the Christian realm. That's the only difference. So pantheism, all what they're teaching is they're putting a Christian form. Right. It's pantheism. Actually, actually, and that Boogie, involved in yeah, India. Yeah, but Boogie, if you think about it, if, yeah. if you really think about it, you can make anything be a god. Oh, you can make a tree, you a can car. Make, you can make a it, car it, be a god. You can make your money be your god. You, everything. You can make your house be your well, god. What, what, your your well, car yeah. be your god. You know. Right. You can bow down and worship your house just like a god. Well, well the thing is, that really comes from India because they believe that's where the new age comes from. They believe that everything's a god or everything's a force. Just like, like a cow. It, they well, think a cow's a god. That's their ancestors. Exactly. Well, they, they believe in reincarnation, but the thing is, it's the force. Remember Star Wars? Right, everything right, is the right. force. The force, yeah. Well, yeah. see, that's yeah. why I use that. Mm-hmm. That's why, look, look how to use this term. Uh-huh. The fate force. force. Yeah, that, uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. Fate is so, is a force of the force. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's uh-huh. a force. And, yeah. and, and look, it's the same thing. Jehovah's Witness use the same thing. The yeah. Holy Spirit is not a. It's, it's a force. It's a force. Uh-huh. No, it, it, now that's why I get when I hear force. I'm like, hey, mm-hmm. this is kind of yeah. yeah. kind of yeah. shaky yeah. at the beginning. Exactly. And another thing you got to realize too, like in Mormonism, and this is this is really freaked me out. Like in Mormonism, they actually teach that you go to a planet and you become a god. So, <laughs> so, so you look at well, the don't, don't I, did, I did hear about that. That yeah. is true. They do mm-hmm. believe that. Yeah. And, and they do believe that you can go to a certain planet and you can have all these versions and, and you can be a god yourself. Yeah, in your own planet. And your own planet. Well, you, you, you have your own planet, but you're a god and you got all these virgins and then you have children mm-hmm. and all that. That sound so, that sound like uh, that sound like uh, Islam. 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 Yeah. When, when, when yeah. we get to it, when we get to it, that's why when we do it, I'm going to show Islam and we're going to show Mormonism because they're very they're similar. Both very well, similar. Well, well yeah. I had I, I talked to a Mormon lady one time and she did not believe me when I told her this. Mm-hmm. But uh, the Mormons also believe that if you're a good Mormon wife, when you go to this heaven, mm-hmm. whatever they call mm-hmm. it, yeah. that you're going to go ahead and be eternally pregnant. Yeah, and you're gonna yeah. have yeah. maybe a spirit baby. You have spirit babies. One, one evangelist, That's not heaven one, of, one, one evangelist, <laughs> one of <laughs> one evangelist said that his wife said, "I don't want to go." <laughs> oh, I ain't heaven for a woman. No, but but, but we get like, like, the teachings. Like, let's just go with that. It, it's funny yeah. how all these false teachers, all these false teachings, have a connection. They all have areas. a connection. Every well, one of them. But the thing is, I'm gonna bring it back. Oh, Brother Bowen mentioned is the Garden of Eden. When it all Satan, started in the Garden of Eden, yeah. where Satan deceived Adam, well, deceived Eve, and they ate of that fruit. That's where all your false teachings, all your all, all your false things of today come from. It comes from the Garden of Eden, from what Adam and Eve did in the Garden. And, and, now, and, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If, if Eve would have ate of the fruit, and Adam wouldn't have touched the fruit, do you think we'd be under the curse we under today? Mm. No, because you know why? Because Adam was given the commandment not to eat of that tree. That's right. Well, I want to go ahead because some people might be asking, what are y'all talking about? Genesis chapter 3, mm-hmm. verse 4, but the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. He said, God's a liar, mm-hmm. uh-huh. basically. Now, that's why he's the father of lies. That's I believe right. that was the first lie that's ever the recorded. First lie. For God knows that when you eat of it, you your eyes will be open, open. and you will be like, like God. God. Mm-hmm. Um, I think King James said you will be a God or something. I'm not sure. Well, well they have some versions say gods. So God, yeah. so knowing yeah. good and, and evil, evil that mm-hmm. started the whole, the whole evolution teaching. That started the whole word, word of, of faith movement. That started the Mormonism. Mar- all that all stuff. That. All of that it. started because look. Let's go. Let's go to the. Let's go to the source of the problem. Well, you, you, and you might be thinking, well, ain't that Stephen Furtick? Isn't that can't it cope? No, it's Satan. Mm-hmm. The devil. In Isaiah, in Isaiah, when he said, "I will be among the high," no, I will be right. like the Most High. That's right. That's his thing. That's... He wants to be God, and unfortunately, the job is taken, and he cannot have it. Yeah, he, right. he, I tell you what, and he's going to fight hard to dethrone God or dethrone Christ because he wants to control this world. Well, and that's mm-hmm. a way. I think that's how he has crept in to the modern church because, unfortunately, we have people today. That hear a message like what Stephen Furtick teach and what Cleflo Dollar teach and what Kenneth Copeland teaches like, oh, we're made in the image. I'm a little God is is puffing up 
man, and that's the whole thing about this this word of faith movement as well. It's puffing up man to God status and putting God into a man status. Mm-hmm. I am, and that so, is blasphemy. I am so afraid for these people. Okay, you know, the body dies, the spirit and the soul lives forever. And, and I was at work, mm. and I had listened to Jimmy Swagger talking about, you know, hell and heaven. And I can imagine being in heaven for eternity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can imagine living with Jesus for eternity and having eternal life. Mm. But I cannot, I cannot, and I'll say that, and I, I want those that are listening, I want those that are going to listen to this, I, I want you to listen to what I'm saying. I cannot imagine to live in hell no. mm-hmm. and burn for eternity. I, I can understand one day in hell or 10 years in hell or 100 years in hell or 1,000 years or a million years, but for eternity, mm-hmm. forever. To never know the relief of pain, to never know the relief of agony and suffering. And let me tell you something. Those of you that are listening, uh, if you're listening right now, listen to what I'm going to tell you. If you don't know Jesus Christ, if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, or are you listening to these false teachers, or you're listening to these pastors, you need to turn away from that and, 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 and hear the truth. Go where they teach you the true word of God, because I'm going to tell you something now. You're going to follow them in the same place that they're going. Yep. The gate, Jesus said the, the the way is narrow. Straight is the way and narrow is the gate that leads to eternal life. But broad is the way and wide is the road that leadeth to destruction. Many will find it. And many will find that road. Listen, listen, listen. My heart goes out to all those that are listening. You don't want to spend eternity in hell. No. You you don't want to you don't want to your soul is your soul is more important than the money that you make on a job. Your soul is, is worth more than any dollar can buy. If you want to make a decision, if you want to do something that's going to last for eternity, turn to Jesus Christ. Yep. Repent Amen. of your sins. Turn away from them false teachers and false doctrines. Turn away from that, that junk is poisoning you. It's going to send you to hell. I'm not I'm not condemning nobody, but it's going to send you to a place that you're going to regret. And everything that you heard, you're going to hear for all eternity. It's going to play back in your mind. And everything I'm saying on here, you're going to hear if you spend eternity in hell. You're going to hear this over and over just like a tape recorder. It's going to play back in your mind. It's going to torment you. Please, please listen to what I'm telling you. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Give your life to the Lord and turn away and find somebody that is teaching the true word of God and find a place and get along with the Lord and spend time in his word. Life is too precious. Listen, once you close your eyes in debt, there is no more chance of making it right. Now's the time to make it right with God. Now's the time to turn away from that. I I call it garbage. It's garbage. Turn away from it. Give your life to Christ and let Jesus teach you the truth. Yeah, and, and Isaac, it, I don't mean to say all that, but no, these people, no, it needs to be said. It needs to be said. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and call out to one more group of people because you know what reminded me a lot of this when I was hearing it, Nelson, brother Nelson Sadai, the one that wrote "Damnation to Salvation." He was with us last week, and you know what he said he said the first thing he went to was the Catholic Church. But then at home, he started watching the Joel Osteens and the Jesse Duplantis. And he started watching these words. And he said, and he was saved. He gave his life to the Lord. But he said the Spirit of God, God. Mm-hmm. told him that was not right. That wasn't right. That's right. And there's a lot of people that say that we got saved and we started listening to Jesse Duplantis and started listening to these Word of Faith ministers. And guess what? It just didn't feel right. If it does not feel right, that's because it's, it's not, not right. right. That's right. So this is what I recommend. Like Bowen said, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, find a Bible-believing church that preach the gospel. And if you do not have one, I got three resources you, for you to do. One right. is this podcast. 
If you don't want to stay in there, listen to this podcast until you find a church. That's right. I don't usually say it. And look, I'm saying that. Find a church. Don't just, well, I'm going to listen to brothers just searching for my spiritual growth. No, no, don't do that. No, no, no. Don't do that. Because you need to be under a church. Mm -hmm. Second, if you if you listen to this podcast and you can't you still can't find a church, look up Sunlight Broadcasting Network on your TV, there your radio. You go. There also, you go. we have two churches here that have podcasts. Go to Holmes Full Gospel Church. Mm-hmm. It's called Sermons from the Swamp Podcast. Go listen it. Go listen to Brother Lanny preach. Also, you can go listen to our podcast at New Beginnings Fellowship Church. That's right. Look up New Beginnings mm-hmm. Fellowship BB on your podcast platform. And listen to good. Look, we had a good service yesterday, Yo. boy. Oh, mm-hmm. Brother oh, Stephen yeah. McKay was a oh, guest yeah, speaker, buddy. and he preached oh, the house down he last night. He preached the house down, brother. So you will hear good sound doctrine from these three. And also, you can look up New Beginnings on Facebook. Yeah, we have a until you find a home church. There is churches out there, folks. Yes, there, there are doctrine. true Bible believing Christians. And look, I got friends in Arkansas. I got friends in Pennsylvania. I got friends in New York. I yeah. got friends yeah. in, in all over the loop. Brother Nelson's in Indiana. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? There is people that are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ that is according to the Bible. That's right. And they're not teaching people you can be little gods. No. Mm Because we're not. No, we're not. That's right. Good conversation tonight, Mm -hmm. guys. Oh, yeah. All right, everybody. I want to thank you again for listening to uh, Brothers Just Searching. Again, you can find our home churches page on the description at the bottom. It is... New Beginnings Fellowship Church and also Coda Holmes Fellowship. They have their information on their podcast and their live streams and everything like that. We want to thank you again. Please, if you have not yet, hit subscribe. We It helps out more than you know. Hit follow on the page and you get all the new episodes. Go check out our social media account, New Beginnings Fellowship, uh, not New Beginnings Fellowship, Brothers Just Searching Facebook page. And go ahead and check out our website, brothersjustsearching.wordpress.com. And you get all our information. And like I said, we're growing here. We've got some visions. So we're going to go ahead and try to act upon them visions. We're not going to speak in faith. Well, we're going to speak in faith. Lord, let things happen. We're not going to speak in the, you know, if that was the case, I'm just, I'm just telling y'all guys that that was the case. <laughs> That we speak things into existence, I wouldn't have paid for none of this. I was just like, computer, soundboard, lights, uh, mics. Oh, it would have just popped up. Yeah. That's yeah. No, yeah. but God is using this. God has opened doors, and we're slowly moving into. Because right. we're in a year and a half. Yeah. We're getting close to two years. Bo, and you're getting close to one year. So God has opened up doors. Mm, and we're, we're going through the doors, but we need your help by hitting support. And if you want to help in any other way, go to our Facebook page, send me a message, and I'll go ahead and I'll instruct you how to help us out more. And, so. and it's free. I mean, just saying it free. out. Free. You know, yeah. Anchor came out the other day and said something about that. You can have paid content. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why? On both our podcasts here, because we also film Brothers uh, Cons- uh, Gage and Conservative. Conservative here. And I'm just like, why? Why? You know, freedom isn't free, but we got to have to tell people about freedom. And the gospel is free, so free. why we should pay, tell why, people, hey, pay right. a dollar to come listen to us. Yeah. No, I'm not, no, 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 no. No, I'm I mean, not doing no. that. I mean, We're all you have that. to do is word by mouth helps a lot, and it's yes. cheap. You don't yeah, tell a friend. Money. I forgot to yeah. say that. Tell yeah. a friend. You know, a, yeah. lot of, a lot of people say, I tell this to tell, tell about my friends on this, and mm-hmm. we have a lot of people. You know, if 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 the if the people that will listen to this podcast go ahead and tell one friend, oh, then they'll tell another. They will tell another friend. Man. You know how much people will listen to this podcast? Oh, you got that right. Word by mouth helps a lot. Yeah, more than you know. More than you know. So until next week, guys, we have a uh, we. I, I I'm not gonna say nothing. I think we have a, a special guest. I guess you could say you could, he hasn't been here in a while. So been a while. So we're gonna go ahead and we're we're working towards our Daniel study. So I'm excited about that. So the Lord got great things, guys, and we just got to keep on moving yeah. forward. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Until next week, everyone. You have a blessed and wonderful week. Also, belated Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Thank God for fathers. If they weren't here, we wouldn't be here. So, so guys, may God bless you. May God keep you. May his face forever shine upon you. And remember, Jesus is king. He's coming back. Are you ready to meet him? Until next week, you have a good week.